It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Kyle Benedict as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives in Yavapai County. And now here's today's Countywide. Welcome to County One. I'm Paul David. Great to have you in the studio with us today. We have a full room today. We have three humans and three dogs with us today. We are talking with the YCSO Search and Rescue Search Dog Unit. We have Michelle War Warburton. Correct. We have Tony Turk, the coordinator for the team. And then we have Rose Ortiz. Hi. Welcome to the studio. Thank Thanks for having us. At the same time, with Michelle is Sasha. With Tony is Hogan. And then we have Chulo right here next to Michelle, this big fellow right here next to me. These are all dogs that go out and search for people who are missing. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Tell me about the team. What's the team all about? Let's talk about that first. Well, uh, the search dog unit is part of the Yavapai County Search and Rescue Team. Uh, we're a team of volunteers, approximately uh, 125 or 30 people. Uh, the dog unit is 20 people. Uh, we work exclusively for the Yavapai County Sheriff. Uh, we're called out to help him find missing people uh, or suspected uh, deceased people, mm -hmm. missing children, uh, seniors, dementia or some other uh, sickness. Uh, Do we, how many dog teams are there in, in the state? Do we know? Dog units well, like e this? Each county has a search and rescue team, mm -hmm. but each search and rescue team does not have a dog unit. Uh, I would say there are probably five or six dog units in the search and rescue team. Because you, you guys were called out yesterday, right? Because there yes. was the missing woman up on, in the Coconino County area. So yes. it's, it's not just Yavapai County. You will go outside of Yavapai County to assist. If the Coconino County Sheriff calls our sheriff and asks to use us, uh, then we will, we will go. And we have worked in uh, Apache County. We have worked in uh, Maricopa. Uh, we have worked in uh, Mojave uh, and Coconino. So. Pretty much to say, pretty much across the state. Yes. I want to get to this real quick, too. I want to know how each of you wound up getting into this. Let's start with you, Rose. How did you become interested in this to begin with? And then did you and Shulo get into this, involved? Well, um, I got Chulo as a puppy and I realized that he really needed a job. He loves to work and loves to please. Um, of course, the other thing that prompted me was um, years ago, the events of 9-11 um, and, and just the, the need to help people and help my community. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that got you involved. Now, what made, let me ask, uh, then the other question for each of you too is, what made Chulo a good choice for this kind of job? You said you knew he was a work dog. What made you think that? Yes, Chulo has a lot of drive, and uh, that's um, an indication of a good search dog, a, a, a dog that has a lot of drive and a willingness to please. Um, they need to be, uh, be able to get along with other dogs, mm -hmm. and they need to be able to be friendly with humans. And, um, and then you can pretty much train them to, to give you the indications they need to be a good search dog. And we're gonna, we'll get into the indications. I'm curious about that, too, as to how you know what's going on. Tony, how about you? What made Hogan a good dog for this choice, and what made you get involved? Well, getting involved, I got involved seven years ago uh, when I happened to be walking on a trailhead, and I bumped into two ladies who were walking five golden retrievers, and that drew my attention. It turned out they were active in the search and rescue uh, search dog unit. Uh, and I just asked them if they needed some volunteers and got involved, and it's become um, my major free time activity. Mm -hmm. uh, Hogan is, uh, we, we got him because we have another search dog uh, whose name is Angus, uh, and Angus is four years older than Hogan. Uh, but Angus was such a great search dog that when his father sired another litter, we decided to get, get one of those because uh, I was retiring a dog at that point in time and I needed a puppy to start training. Gotcha. Okay. And Michelle, how did you and Sasha get involved in this? Kind of the same thing. Um, when I started in search and rescue, um, it was 
seeing a group that was out and wanting to get involved in that and thought that's a really good cause mm -hmm. um, to help find the lost and um, missing people. Um, and then <clears throat> Sasha, as far as finding her, she was kind of handpicked for that specific job um, using an assortment of assessments to see if she would be appropriate for the job, and she is. So what kind of training do you have to go through, I mean, to get these guys to, and gals to work for you mm -hmm. like this? It's got to be quite a bit because, I mean, they're not specifically made. Are they specifically made for this type of work? Well, <laughs> I mean, could you teach a Chihuahua to do this job? Let me ask you that. Could I teach a Chihuahua to do the same kind of job? It's not likely. Okay. It's not likely. Okay. Why is that? Uh, well, number one, the dogs need to be fairly large dogs because we need to cover large amounts of territory. Mm -hmm. So our, our requirement is that the dog be at least 15 inches at the shoulder. And that's what, so you could see them above brush? And that's because their li legs are longer and they've got stamina to cover, Okay. All uh, right. you know, search for five, six hours at a time and gotcha. cover a lot of ground. Uh, they also uh, need to be very trainable. Uh, this dog is a, is a, what we call a trailing tracking dog. Uh, it is able to, to lock onto a particular human scent. Uh, and discriminate that scent from all other human scents. Uh, so it could go down uh, a sidewalk where 50 people have walked and discriminate that one particular scent. Really? Sasha as a bloodhound could do she that? She could do that. Oh, no kidding. She could do that. I didn't know it was that powerful. Yeah, okay. very, very powerful. Okay. Now, these, these other two dogs are trained to just work with their nose up and to scent any human scent that's we might be searching a field or some large area uh, and <clears throat> we use these dogs then to cover that territory and they work off leash way out ahead of us sometimes I was maybe, gonna ask you about maybe that. 100 meters ahead of us they might even be out of sight uh, but they're at night they're wearing lighted collars uh, and bells so we have some idea of where they are and what they're doing uh, how late at night do you go out and search with the dogs? Well, we like to we we like to work at night. Okay. Particularly in the summertime, we'll work overnight uh, because heat really saps the dogs. Okay. Uh, so we want to work when it's cool. The other thing is is we're probably the best asset the sheriff has to work it in the dark because the dogs are just efficient because they're working off scent. Right. So if a, like a child is lost. The sheriff can't say to the family, well, we're going to wait until 8 o'clock in the morning and start the search. Uh, we need to start immediately. And, of course, the dogs can be as, as efficient at night as they are during the day. Uh, terrific benefit. Fantastic. We have to take our first break already. Can you believe it? I'm going to use my notes here, okay? Rose Ortiz and Chulo here. Tony Turk, coordinator with uh, Hogan. And then uh, Michelle Warburton with Sasha in studio today with the YCSO Search and Rescue Dog Unit. I'm Paul David. This is Countywide. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto-sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. So, I'm kind of new here but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Hart, what's going on? I'm leaving. Why? What did I do? Not enough. You constantly ignore me. You barely eat anything healthy. You're half as active as you used to be. The pressure is just too much. I quit. Okay, I get it. I'll do better. Just please, don't leave. Okay. But remember, if I go, you go. 
Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Cook foods to the right temperature using a food thermometer. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to County Wine. So good to be to join us. We're talking with the YCSO Search and Rescue Dog Unit. We have three guests and three dogs in the studio, all with different uh, abilities. I guess these two are the, the air sniffers. Yes. Now, do they all go out and work together? I mean, does the whole team come out or as many members can possibly come out, show up for these searches? Well, we have some people who are still working and uh, have different schedules. So uh, we everybody has the opportunity when we get called by the sheriff, everybody gets gets called to go on the search. Some people can, some people can't. Gotcha. Well, let's go through the breeds of the dogs real quick. Ryan said we should probably do that. Uh, Michelle, what do you have right there? Sasha is a bloodhound. Sasha's a bloodhound. And Hogan, Tony? He's a yellow Labrador Retriever. Such a handsome boy. And this guy right here, I won't say his name because he seems to be really nice and quiet <laughs> right now. Chulo is a German Shepherd. He is amazing. Thank you. Spectacular. Massive, <laughs> massive dogs. Um, now, let's, 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 let me ask you this question, and this is one I wanted to make sure I, I, I asked you guys, because this would be like something I could get involved in, right? If I had a dog like similar to this that just had this ability and this desire to go out and, and, and do good and work, um, there's, that, there's that, at, that aspect of the job where you know you're going out, to, you're looking for somebody who is missing and sometimes presumed deceased. Correct. How do you handle that situation? Now, you, you mentioned, Tony, that the dogs are allowed to run sometimes 100 meters ahead of you. So let's, let's start with that first. When, the, when the, dog, the dog is allowed to run out ahead, they're not necessarily leashed to you. They've got their, their, um, their vest on. They go out. What do they do when they find what it is they're looking for? What's their job? When the dog makes a find, the dog um, does what we call a recall. Okay. And he will come back and give me an indication that he has made a find. And all the dogs have different indications. Chulo, for instance, will do a sit. And he just runs up to you and sits down? He will run up to me and sit down. Okay. And then I will ask him to show me, and he will take me to the find, and he will do another sit at the source. Oh, wow. And then he will get a, a reward for doing that. And that's, that's trained. He's been trained to do this. Yes. Those are the things that we train on. All dogs have the ability to find things. Um, sure. For instance, if you have a dog who can find a toy that you hide for him at home. But what is special about these dogs and what we specifically train on is all of the steps in the sequence. They have to go out, make the find. They have to come back and indicate that they've made that find. They have to take us back and, and indicate at the source. Mm -hmm. now, now, when the search begins, is it the car, the clothes, the missing person's items? They're, they're, they must be given something to say, this is what you're looking for. This is the smell you're searching for. So, this so, is what we need from a tracking dog. Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, so Sasha's a trailing dog. Uh -huh. And so at the when we begin a search, um, if we have s scent articles that we can collect from mm -hmm. the subject itself, the dog, um, the trailing dogs are introduced and they're specifically taught to take that specific scent and to only follow that specific scent. Okay, so is, is Sasha <coughs> lead and then everybody kind of follows her out and branches out? I'm trying to figure out how that works. It depends on the search. Each okay. one is different. Um, if we have a search where we know where the person was last seen and where they roamed off, we usually start a trailing dog at that point to indicate a direction of travel and then we continue on and then that gives us an idea of what direction to head the other dogs in. So they may even work side by side on a search where you'll have her on the trail specifically um, working close to the trail to follow and to keep that direction of travel of which way the person went. And then we have um, the air scent dogs who will flank the side areas to um, ensure that they um, are covering the outside perimeter areas, you know, while, um, while she's working. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does. Okay. Now, 
human aspect of this. I don't know if I'd be able to go out. Um, of course, I'd be ecstatic that my dog has found what it is we're looking for. But times, the person's not deceased. They've, they've survived their ordeal, that they've been lost. What's that like, first of all? Let's, let's start there, and we'll, we'll go to the darker side of this after that. Okay. What's it like to, to show up and have somebody who's been lost for a day or two out there in, in this wilderness, and then they see you coming, and they know that Hogan, Chulo, or Sasha is the reason why they've been found? Who wants well, to take that one? <laughs> the answer to that is is, is we we view that as a as a huge success for us. The reason we, we train these dogs so hard, we train you know hours and hours every week, uh, usually twice Wednesdays and Saturdays, uh, so that when we were able to go out and successfully find somebody uh, in almost any condition, uh, for us. That's a huge win and mm -hmm. a huge success, and we're very, very proud of our ability to do that. Now, there's the, there are the instances where they're deceased. Yes. How are you trained to deal with that when you walk up and, and, and find that? Well, it's, I suppose, different for every individual, but there's still this same sense of accomplishment. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, obviously, we're not happy uh, right. uh, that the, the person didn't make it, but we are happy that we are able to do our job uh, and there's a sense of closure and, and it's a better answer uh, than not finding them. I guess that, that would be true, right? Especially for the yeah. families of these individuals. Mm -hmm. They need that, that sense of, you know, what happened and, and you know, to be able to, to deal with their loved ones once that has happened. I can see that. I can see that where that would be a really good closure to know that your dog found this person that's been missing and the family is relieved, whether dead or alive. Let's, can we talk a little bit about the training? We've got a couple minutes before we have to take a break. Let's do that. Uh, Training-wise, you said a couple times a week. You train Wednesdays and Saturdays. Yes. What does the tra training consist of? Because before we got started here, I saw I saw Chulo here show us that he's very in tune with his dog treats. His dog he knows treats exactly where they are, are his reward. Right. He loves them. And uh, today, for instance, I brought cookies, but it, during training, he gets a special treat for mm -hmm. the work he's doing. Um, as far as training goes, we uh, start with motivational to keep the dogs excited about their job. And then we um, usually do some simulations, um, you know, we hide someone and ask the dogs to go find them. So that's a really great part of our job. Okay. Once they find them, it's a big party. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, you could probably be pretty elaborate on how, how, how well you hid too, right? Yes. Right? I mean, Sasha could probably find me from miles away. Couldn't she? That's Absolutely. Goal. That's her job, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. job. And, and Hogan as well, and, and <clears throat> Sheila for that matter. Sometimes we use a camouflage net and really uh, put someone under a bush where they're very hidden and we cannot see them at all. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they might be in a tree. You know, we really try to trick them, but you can't trick these dogs. They're pretty, pretty good at what they do. Look at them. They're all amazing. They're all just kind of kick it back and relaxed. Hopefully yeah. everyone's at home doing the same thing. Very relaxed right now. Looking pretty good in this year's calendar. Yes, yes. We do have a calendar and we're going to take our next break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about this calendar, okay? okay? And what the funds go towards, okay? So stick around. Uh, the YCSO dog unit in studio today with the search and rescue team. This is County Y back in just a couple minutes. Good one, son. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. First, we went deep sea fishing. Wow! I'm so proud of you, son. And then we went on Thunder Shark. That was awesome! Let's go again! Three times. I gotta say, it was pretty cool. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, not again. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. <laughs> Thank you. 
This is the moment I knew. His future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. I've got a job to do today. I've got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. Welcome back to County Y. We've got a couple minutes left in the program. Uh, we're talking with the YCSO Search and Rescue Dog Unit. We have Sasha, Hogan, and Chulo in studio today. And uh, this is a calendar. All these guys and gals are featured on here. I don't want to leave Sasha out. I keep saying guys. All the guys and gals are on the back of this calendar. But tell me a little bit about the calendar and what it's for and what the money you raise. They all look at each other. Who wants to talk <laughs> about this? Go ahead, Rose. Well, the calendar is our annual fundraiser, and we use it to buy equipment. Um, this year, for instance, all of our uh, participants got helmets, um, and uh, we also got some um, GPS for our dogs. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Also, GPS will be attached right to the dog. Yes, yeah. oh. which is very exciting. Yeah, that'll be a huge help. Yes. Yeah, the sheriff, we put the GPS right in this part of his vest. Okay. We've got uh, a little holster, a little Velcro <coughs> holster on the top there. And then when we come in from the search, uh, the sheriff will download our track and the dog's track to determine if an area has been searched well enough or if he needs to send more searchers out there. How long do the, how long are a rotation for a search rotation? When you go out, eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours? No, the dog can work in, in in good conditions, it can work five hours. Okay. Uh, and then it needs to take a break. Take a break, okay. So about five hours, and then what, do we rotate a new dog in and, and the search resumes, or do you just go right back out? No, if it's, if it's hot, we'll just stop for the day and go then back out in the evening again. Okay. Now, in addition to the, the GPS, which is great to have those in the dogs, that's, that's going to be a little relieving, too. I mean, what if the dog goes missing? At least you have that to look into to be able to track down the dog as well. <laughs> But uh, I noticed they're wearing vests. They are. Which has the reflective uh, yellow tapes right. on them, tape mm -hmm. on them. So they all have that. Anything else that they wear while they're out, out and about? Sometimes they wear bells, mm -hmm. um, which helps us uh, just to kind of get a general idea of where they're at because they're ranging out ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, at night, they wear a, a lighted collar. Um, but otherwise, we try to we don't put much more equipment on them. Sure. We carry equipment uh, for ourselves and our dogs. We carry our water, enough water for them, food, snacks. Well, thank you so much for everything you do. That is really awesome that you all take part in this this service. Okay, I'm going to go through the names again before we say goodbye here. Michelle Warburton with Sasha. Thank you for coming into studio. Tony Turk is the coordinator for the dog unit. Thank you for coming in with Hogan. Mm -hmm. And then we have Chulo here. Rose Ortiz brought him in. And Chulo's been kind of whiny a little bit, but he's ready to go back <laughs> out, and, out and about and do things. I'm Paul David. That's today's County Wide, and we will talk to you again next time. <laughs>